Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy household, the church, in continual godliness, that through the protection it may be free from all adversities and devoutly given to serve thee in good works, to the glory of thy holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Verse 1 of Hymn 313. Let thy blood in mercy poured, let thy gracious body broken, be to me, O gracious Lord, of thy boundless love the token. Thou didst give thyself for me, now I give myself to thee. Turn our attention to John Newman's The Arians of the 4th Century, their doctrine, temper, and conduct chiefly is exhibited in the councils of the church between 325 and 381. John Newman, second edition, reprinted in 1854. I don't, I forget now when he left the Church of England to join Rome. Um, I just, I used to know the details. To the Reverend John Keeble, Fellow of Oriel College, pro Professor of Poetry in the University of Oxford, from his affectionate friend and servant, J.H.N. Advertisement. The following work was written in the early part of the last year for Messrs. Rivington's Theological Library, but it seems on its completion, but it'll fit it for the objects with which that was undertaken. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Though some of them as the Defensio Fide Nicene, events, gifts, moral and intellectual of so high a cast as to render it a privilege to be allowed to sit at the feet of their authors and to receive their words, which they have been, as it were, commissioned to deliver. That's a, we're looking at that Bishop George Bull's Defensio uh, nice, uh, Defensio nice, uh, nice, Nicene. Preface to the second edition. When in the autumn of 1852, I established a press connection with my mission here, the difficulty which met me at the outset was to employ, find employment for, him, for it. Being anxious to make it serviceable to the cause of the church, I wished to bring forward a few theological works which were difficult to be procured. One of the first that occurred to me was the present treatise, which I had read several years before and with deep interest. The series of communications. It was at one time proposed that the author should correct the sheets and make, is this John? No, it's Forbes. Sorry, it's an editor. Content, schools and parties in and about the anti-Nicene church considered in their relation to the Arian heresy, the Church of Antioch, Paulus, Bishop of Antioch, Lucian, and Arianizers at Antioch, Judaism, its influence on the church, on Antioch, Cortodicemian rule in Asia, in Syria, in Phrygia, Judaism leading to Arianism, Corinthians and Ebionites, Nazarenes. Two, the school of the sophists, Arianism, a disputative system, and its connection with the schools of the sophists, practice of disputation within the church, axioms assumed in the discussion, need of a symbol of faith, unwillingness of the church to impose it. The Church of Alexandria, accusations brought against it from different quarters, 
its missionary and polemical character. The disciplina, disciplina, disciplina arcani, principle and conduct of the catechetical school of the public preaching, remarks on disciplina, the allegory, its, exist, its history, existing in scripture, canon for its use as applied by the Alexandrians, the economy, instances of it, its principle, canon for its use, divine use of it, pretended instances, the dispensation of paganism, proof of it from scripture, corollaries from the doctrine, Platonism, pagan tradition of a trinity received by the Jews, by Christians. <clears throat> Section 4, rise of the sect, the eclectic principle, its neologism not countenanced by the Alexandrian masters, contrasted with the Arian temper, use of the doctrine of the Arians. Section 5, it's bearing up Sabellianism, it's bearing on Arianism, it's two schools, the two forms of its essential tenet, its effect upon the language of orthodox controversialists, illustrations, Dionysius of Alexandria, Gregory of Neo Caesarea, recapitulation of the whole chapter. Chapter 2 on the Doctrine of the Holy Trinity, Section 1 on the Principle of the Formation and Imposition of Creeds, Unwillingness of Primitive Christians to Reveal Their Doctrines, Perplexing Them in Their Controversy with Heretics, Forward and Disorderly Conduct of the Latter, Duty Incumbent on the Church to Declare and Impose a Test, First, to quiet the speculations of the intellect. Next, to ascertain the true Christian temper, the Nicene formulary. Section 2, the scripture doctrine of the Trinity. Gradual revelation of the doctrine. In the Old Testament, in the New, necessity of keeping it to scripture. Its mysteriousness. Section 3. The doctrine of the huias monogenes, the genesis, its various senses, its incomprehensibility, practical information conveyed by it, imperfection and risk of metaphor, Valentinianism, the doctrine of the logos, practical use of it, imperfection of the metaphor, Sabellianism, Unity of God, the object of doctrinal statements. The hen theo, the perichoresis, the ektheu, the monarchia. Section 4, variations in the anti-Nicene theological statements. <coughs> Principle and nature of the variations. The agenis, son is really tiny. The Hanarchon, it's can't read it. The Amusias, Hamausias, Taon, Huterusian, Doctrine of Emanations, Tertullian and Origin, Theognostus, Plotinus and the Orientalists, the Lagos and the Athetis and Proforicas, the five philosophizing fathers. The Arian heresy, Arianism first taught within the church by Arius, contrasted with the doctrine of the five fathers, eclecticism, orientalism, Paulianism, Sabellianism, orthodoxy, its fundamental argument, and positions therein involved. Its first inference from the Genesis, origination and time, its second inference, origination at the Father's phalasis, adoptionism, 
other arguments and inferences, documents of the controversy, letters from Arius to Eusebius and Alexander, extract of his Thalia, letter from Eusebius to Paulinus, Alexander's circulars, remark on the controversy, unscripturalness of Arianism, its impatience of mystery and consequent assumptions in the argument. It accuses the Catholics of inconsistency, then of materialism, then presses the figurative interpretation, baseness and its mode of applying it and shallowness, conclusion at which its reasonings arrive alternative of polytheism and humanitarianism, its versatility, its conduct at Nicaea, anxiety and duty of the Catholics to detect and expose it. Chapter 3, The Council of Nicaea, History of the Council, Rise of Arianism, its progress in Palestine and Asia Minor, brought before the notice of Constantine. The character of his religion illustrated his conduct towards the heresy, convokes the Council of Nicaea, proceedings of the Council, the Hamausian, condemnation of Arius, submission of the Arian prelates, section two. Consequences of the Nicene Council, the Eusebians, their secular spirit, their success re recommended to Constantine by their suppleness, by their leaders, Eusebius of Nicomedia, of Caesarea, by the influence of the court, by the arts of flattery, the Catholics, their gratifications and anxieties, their position, attempt to restore Arius to the church, conduct of Athanasius, of Alexander of Constantinople, death of Arius, reflections. Chapter four, councils in the reign of Constantius, section one, the Eusebians, the use and effect of religious mysteries, Arian inconstancy, the principal Eusebians, Acacius, George of Laodicea, Leontius, Eudoxius, Valens, they persecute Athanasius, who is defended by the Latins. Council of the Dedication, its four formularies, Creed of Lucian, General Council of Sardica, schism among its members, Eusebians at Philopolis, Athanasius acquitted and restored at the instance of Constans, retraction of Valens and Ursacius. Section two, the, the Semiarians, consequence of the Council of Sardica, Council of the Latins, Character of the Semiarians, the Hamausian, the system, their leaders, Basil of Ancyra, Eustathius of Sebast, Eleusius, Mark, Cyril of Jerusalem, Eusebius of Samosata, Macedonius, a gradual separation from the Eusebians, their influence with Constantius, artifice of the Eusebians to circumvent them, Hamoyan, history of the symbol. The Athanasians, section three, the first persecution, its objects, subscription to the Hamayan, and condemnation of Athanasius, Paul of Constantinople, Lucius of Adrianople, Council of Sirmium, Marcellus of Ancyra, Photinus, 
Council of Arles, Fall of Vincent of Capua, Council of Milan, Lucifer of Cagliari, and Eusebius of Vercelli, General Defection of the Latins, Banishment of the Athanasians, Exile and File of Liberius, Imprisonment and Fall of Hosius, Persecution of Athanasius, George of Cappadocia. Section 4, The Onomians, Recapitulation, History of Aetius, Eunomius, their cause patronized by Valens in the court, coalition of the Homoians, <coughs> and then Onomians, Council of Antioch, Alarm of the Semiarians, Council of Ancyra, the two parties appeal to Constantius, temporary triumph of the Semiarians, project of a general council under their management, intrigues of Valens and Acacius, councils of Seleucia and Ariminum, fall of the Western Church, Council of Constantinople, banishment of the Semiarians and Anemians, triumph of the Eusebians and Homoian, death of Constantius. The Council of Alexandria, the question of the Arianizers, toleration granted by Julian to all religious persuasions, the Arianizers, decision of the Council concerning them, Condition of the Church of Antioch, Eustathius, Miletius, Interference of Lucifer, Consequences. The Question of the Hypostasis, Section 2. The Divine Personality denoted by persona among the Latins, by hypostasis among the Greeks. Difference in their usage of the latter word. Question before the Council. It's synodical letter, consequences. Chapter 6, the Council of Constantinople. Death of Athanasius, its consequences. State of the Semi-Aryan party. Its adoption of the Hamausian. Consequent rise of the Macedonians. Revival of orthodoxy at Constantinople. Gregory of Nazianzen his trials, Theodosius, downfall of Arianism, insincere subscriptions, Maximus, the meeting of the council, death of Miletius, its consequences, dissensions in the council, Gregory's resignation of his see, conduct of the Latins, additions to the Nicene Creed, Chapter 1, Schools and Parties in and About the Anti-Nicene Church, Considered in Relation to the Arian Heresy, Section 1, The Church of Antioch. It is proposed in the following pages to trace the outlines of the history of Arianism between the first and second general councils. These are its natural chronological limits, whether by Arianism we mean a heresy or party in the church. In the councils held at Nicaea and Bithynia, AD 325, it was formally detected and condemned. In the subsequent years, it ran its course through various modifications of opinion and with various success till the date of the Second General Council, held A.D. 381 at Constantinople, when the resources of heretical subtlety being at length exhausted, the Arian party was ejected from the Catholic body and formed into a distinct sect exterior to it. It is during this period, while it still maintained its hold upon the creeds and the government of the church, 
that it especially invites the attention of the student, student in ecclesiastical history. Afterwards, it presents nothing new in its doctrine, and it's only remarkable as becoming the animating principle of a second series of persecutions when the barbarians of the north, who were infected with the heresy, possessed themselves of the provinces of the Roman Empire. The line of history which is thus limited by the two ecumenical councils will be found to pass through a variety of others, patriarchal, which form easy and intelligible divisions of it and present the heretical doctrine in its various stages of impiety. Accordingly, these shall be taken as cardinal points for our narrative to rest upon, and it will be little matter in effect whether it be called a history of the councils <coughs> or of Arianism between the eras marked out. However, it is necessary to direct the reader's attention in the first place to the state of parties and schools in and about the church at the time of its rise and to the sacred doctrine which it assailed in order to obtain a due insight into the history of the controversy and the discussions which these subjects involved will occupy a considerable portion of this volume. I shall address myself without delay to this work and in this section propose to show that Arianism originated in the Church of Antioch and to observe upon the state and genius of that church in primitive times. In the sections which follow, I shall consider its relation towards the heathen philosophies and the heresies then prevalent. And towards the Church of Alexandria, to which it is often referred, though with very little pretense of reasoning. The consideration of the doctrine of the Trinity shall form a separate chapter. During the third century, the Church of Antioch was more or less acknowledged as the metropolis of Syria, Cilicia, Phoenicia, Comagene, Orshon, and Mesopotamia, in which provinces it afterwards held patriarchal sway. It had been the original center of apostolic missions among the heathen and claimed St. Peter himself for its first bishop, who had been succeeded by Ignatius, Theophilus, Babylus, and others of sacred memory in the universal church as champions and martyrs of the faith. The secular importance of the city added to the influence which accrued to it from the religious associations thus connected with its name, especially when the emperors made Syria the seat of their government. This ancient and celebrated church, however, is painfully conspicuous in the middle of the century as affording so open a manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist as to fill, fill almost literally the prophecy of the possible apostle in 2 Thessalonians 2. Paul of 